Well, well, well. Good morning to European fans of Privateer FX. Most of us have been up for the BOJ this morning, which commenced, fireworks commenced at around 6.30. Not a whole lot happened. We probed the top side up to 43. We printed a nice print at 75. On the downside, now that's a three-point trend line that's, that's worth looking at for the rest of the week. But in the end, they didn't change policy, and they gave themselves a tiny bit of flexibility to change, and nothing really happened, so we're 111.17. The bias from the release should be dollar yen higher, um, because there was word that they were going to change. But we couldn't really even get close to 111.50. Above 111.55, you see we have some clear air. Uh, and the next resistance is 112.07. We have to keep an eye on the news, news feeds here for more BOJ news from press conferences and whatnot. Uh, but so far, looks to be a bit of a dud. What else do we have today? Um, we've got GDP, European GDP. We've got the Flash HICP from Europe and Italy. We have GDP from Canada. And then in the US, we have personal income, PMI, and consumer confidence. Plus, we have month end fix. And then we also have employment out of uh, New Zealand today. But let's take a look about what's going to happen in Europe, and then we'll we'll talk again today, just before the New York Open. Uh, you know, as everyone knows, I've been on holiday for the last sort of ten days. So just coming back into this, a fresh pair of eyes on this chart tells me that um, not a lot has been happening. Um, ups and downs, downs and ups. Just treading water. 115.08 is still massively important. And on the top side, I guess you can say uh, it's 118.05. We're kind of dead smack in the middle of things. Looks like there will be some risk, some stops above 117.50. Um, but if dollar yen inches higher, which I suspect it will at the London Open, euro is probably going to head lower. Dollar Swiss sort of surprised me when I turned the charts back on. I really thought it might be around 102, but of course it's not. Got support here at 98.56. If we get a print here, that will be a um, very important point for Dollar Swiss. A lot of stale longs look like looks like they might get caught here. No horse. Uh, no dog in this fight, so. But wow, looks looks marginally bearish that at first glance. Dollar yen we talked about. A little bit of all if you're quick, you can probably make some money. But things get more interesting through 111.56 or 110.75, as you see now. This is touching three times on the dailies almost four times in the dailies here. It's not a bad little trend line. A lot of bad news out of the UK as I was reading the press from the beach. Marginally higher Euro Sterling. Nothing nothing really crazy. Cable just sort of sitting here on the 131 handle. I did get a lot of queries from a lot of people non pure FX people about the value of sterling, people who own assets in the UK, uh, who live over in the US. What do I think of the pound? What do I think of the pound? Two things uh, I took from that is those who have assets, of course, are getting quite twitchy now. Um, it looks like Brexit's getting worse and worse and worse. But there was also an equal group uh, who are looking to buy assets in London if the pound depreciates to 110 um, and or if the 
housing prices continue to tumble down maybe 20 30 percent so what I take from that is there will be a floor on this uh, I do think not relevant today but there will be a floor on the pound down near 120 between 120 and 110 and this is a good place for long-term asset accumulation just throwing that out there Aussie and Kiwi we had big short accumulations before I left for vacation we have done nothing uh, which leads me to believe that the, there's probably some topside stops, some weak shorts. I'm going to get a little twitchy here. I don't mind buying this. Um, 74.65 and 74.85 look like points that will be a lot of stops. Something to watch here. We don't have anything in yet. Um, Dollar CAD this morning had some news related moves. The US is not inviting Canada to NAFTA meetings. But as far as I remember, the US said they were going to do separate meetings for NAFTA with each country, one with Mexico and one with Canada. So I don't, I don't really see that as news. Dollar CAD did pop up to 131 on that, and now it's back at 130.50 main mover and the main money maker uh, the past week is stocks stocks look like they've turned here we had, we had bearish engulfing on Friday we had continuation lower yesterday the fangs uh, I obviously don't have to tell anyone this uh, Facebook got smashed after Netflix got smashed Twitter which is not a fang also got smashed this uh, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard for the the overall market to to hold up when the fangs are rolling over here. So we're bearish stocks. We think this is pretty clearly a sell-on rally. And for those of you who are trading back in 2008 and 2009, this pattern looks spookily similar. We have the big down move, then we had a one percent move just over the over the highs but not making an all-time high and it rolls over I won't bring the chart up now because uh, I've already said a lot but have a look back this looks sneakily familiar to me and this move here from 2830 to 2850 is just screwing the last hopeful shorts and now I dare say it's on if you are short, which we are, you add through 2790. I'll leave it at that, folks, and I will have a more detailed and action oriented podcast or video at the New York Open. Good luck out there, people. Talk to you in a few hours. Ciao.